up cutting some. Hi, thanks for joining me. I never thought I'd be distilling it, but um, the opportunity presented itself yesterday. Wow, look at that. This is a copper still, so there's an interaction. You'll see some blues coming out. Um, so I was trimming back some modest plants I have, and we're gonna talk about um, rosemary just because we can, and I think you'd rather see the still than me. Hi, Becky. Hi, Helen. You can't hear me at all? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, so I have um, some plants um, by my front door in pots, and I'm here on Long Island, and um, I've grown plants here before. Rosemary, um, you probably know rosemary really well as an essential oil. Thanks, Becky. I can hear you. Hi. Um, so I've had grown plants, but they don't love the cold, right? They don't mind the arid climate. And you know plant talk. This is so impromptu. Again, I didn't plan on doing this. And by the way, the drip just started. I started the fire um, at about a half an hour ago. So rosemary um, officinalis, and it's the Latin name has changed now. I, a salvia ro um, rosemarinus, I think it is now. Um, which makes a little more sense. I like to think this is in the Lamy ACE family, and I often think that lavender and rosemary don't belong there because that you like how can you compare them to mint and others because they're just so botanically different and their growing requirements are so different. Um, so uh, I have a plan. Maybe I'll walk at the end of this and do the after the little video is coming to an end. I have a little plant in a pot, and I wrote this a plant alley for the school. Um, probably three years ago, and that's the plant I've had that flowers. It flowers every May, April, May, and um, that's generally um, in the northern hemisphere when you want to harvest this is when it's, you want the flowering tops. Um, and one thing, a superior essential oil or hydrosol, which I'm looking to have the hydrosol, that's uh, oil, you don't want the twigs especially, and you don't want the woody areas, and it's super sappy. Um, you want, I'm going to dry this for culinary reasons for cooking, you just, you know, strip it and that's what you want to distill and you'll have a less of that potential harshness coming through. Um, this one was really interesting. The one that, uh, that's in the still right now is a prostrate one um, or decumbens where it grows like a carpeting mat and it, it you know, it's kind of you know, can cascade down a wall or out of a pot, and that's how mine is. Generally, we're used to seeing them kind of upright. But the ones that are in the pot have this smoky, seductive nature to them that I was surprised. Um, this is the second year it's growing in that pot, and I have them strategically placed facing south, and they're blocked by the house, because otherwise they die because of the harsh exposure from the wind. Um, but I've never smelled a rosemary like this one, where it was just super smoky. Um, and when I was reading my little allies post I did for, how many years ago, um, I found it intriguing that the aroma profile, I'll just read this to you. Um, when you blend with rosemary, and this one was about the cineol, one that we often know and love in aromatherapy. So the oil first boldly announces itself, penetrating the air with its sharp, fresh, pungent, vibrant, herbaceous notes. The dry down con conveys a seductive, woody, smoky, and dry aroma, reminiscent of the arid, sun-drenched Mediterranean soil. The oil is quite volatile and readily evaporates, leaving um, sweet, powdery, herbaceous whispers of itself on a scent strip. So I thought that was so cool when I just literally read this 10 minutes ago, I looked at my computer to see of, like what I had going on. And the smokiness is awesome. So I don't know if you can get yourself, I know Helen, you're with me. I know you um, have a rosemary plant. I know you love it. I'm wondering if yours smells smoky too and anyone else. But when I go to the grocery store, I'm used to a different aroma. And maybe you are too. So um, I'm just looking at the still. I hope you can see that. Hi. Rosemary, wait, is it better for rosemary compared to steam distillation? I'm not sure. Helen, it's not smoky. Um, so about the distillation here, um, I have a hydro distillation going on, um, and the, uh, herb, the herbaceous material has been macerating for 24 hours. 
Um, I want the hydrosol. I'm not planning on getting any essential oils, so the more I can have the plant material in the water, the more I want. And generally, when I'm distilling for hydrosols, I try to go really low and slow. And I was actually looking at some of the um, essential oil components Um, their boiling points, some of them are like beyond 260 degrees Celsius is um, beta caryophylline. And I'm like, I don't want my still to get up that high. I don't even have a thermometer on this. So yeah, woodsy. Um, It's Uh, so yes, this is a hydro distillation, and um, I've learned to not be snobby too. Um, those of you that know me know my language and the way I talk. I just use my tap water. I have well water here, um, and I'm happy working with my well water. It's been tested, and there's just the distillate comes over, and I'm using this for myself and clients, and I'm totally happy with that. Um, hydrosol class, yes, maybe one day. Um, So a couple of things about the plant, and then let's talk of like smell the oil and do what we usually do with plant talk because we can. Uh, so it is a perennial shrub. Um, those some of you might have shrubs that have been with you for many years. Um, I'm lucky; I had some with me for three years, and then a really hard winter came. Blooms in April, May, um, different parts of the world, but generally that's the time you want to harvest. Maybe June and July. We want the flowering tops. We want the leaf, not necessarily that stem, because you'll get those more harsh notes. You know, those woodsy plant notes, because that's what plants are. Um, similar to many other um, plants of the Mediterranean area, this is native to that whole Mediterranean basin. Major growers and producers to this day are Spain. There was the Dalmatian coast, of course, France, Morocco, um, that whole basin basically will give us, um, that's the big market. Um, th that's where the herb is from. And they really love that lean, um, limey soil. So think pH wise, that's more of a basic soil. And these don't like to be pampered. Um, mine in these pots survive just on neglect. Like I love the plants, so I take care of them, but I know they don't need me to do much. And the, the one that looks pathetic that I hope you'll get to see, it looks pathetic, but it was throwing off flowers this year for two months, I think. And like, I can't believe this. So it's happy being beat up, but it gets enough sun and protection. Let's see. Um, oh, that's the thing too. I'm going to pull out, uh, if you're into the oils and want to be oily, Rosemary um, comes with their chemotypes, and that's a really big, it's not a big deal. You know, it's like the plant's the plant, and it survives in its environment, and it has to adapt, so it, its chemistry changes. So um, I happen to be partial to the verbenin one, um, which generally just comes over in low amounts. You know, it's not going to be 50% verbenin. I'm just looking at my little condenser. Um, this one's from South Africa. And I just have a love affair with Rosemary Verbenon. Some of you might do this to wake up in the morning or if you need some help. Uh, there's a spider that's coming right down right in front of me here, right in the back of the phone that's been hanging out. I don't know if she likes the still. But there's always a soft sweetness to the Verbenon um, chemical type. That's very interesting, and it, it kind of it lacks that harsh cineal kind of pea smell or that camphoraceous smell. And the verbenon, um, one thing I think is interesting for the hydrosol, verbenon is a ketone. It's regenerative, and um, when you cook with the plants, and um, maybe you'll take the hydrosol, maybe you'll cook it with foods. I was thinking I've never tried it. Maybe you'll take spritz it on some roasted potatoes or put it on like foods after you cook them for a nice spritz. Love it in the bath. Love it for like a hair tonic if you want to do like a hair rinse. But um, like as a mouthwash for the hydrosol. But um, taken internally, just the herb itself is known to be a stimulant for the liver and the gallbladder. And we often cook a pear rosemary with foods that are kind of oily and greasy and fatty, like lamb, right? And that helps the gallbladder and the liver work with that fatty greasiness. So you're stimulating, and rosemary is a proven stimulant. It's not just what people have been handing down for centuries. I know once someone says something in the lab, it's somehow official, even though you've known for years, right? And I touched my face, and it's a little tingly after putting the bourbon on. Um, 
I see someone's asking me about for distilling, how long does it take? Uh, it depends on your plant material. It depends on the size of your still. Um, so it's just kind of getting to know your, um, your setup, honestly. And it varies. And it's really dependent, I'd say, on the size of the still and how much water. Like this, I plan on running for two hours, maybe a little less. And actually, one thing about this still now, um, once I'm done with this, I'm going to pay careful attention and raise the heat up a little bit because I want to see what oil I can get over to get those components over because generally I keep it low but I'm like screw it I didn't plan on doing this at all so why not just have a little bit of fun but uh, get to know your your still size um, so let's see I think I don't, I don't even know how we're doing on time but um, we have, so we have the plant, we talked about the plant, and then we'll talk about some oils. But I think it's really nice to work with the hydrosols. I want to start maybe working with this one internally, you know, like a tablespoon a day in some in water. We're not going to like chug it. Um, but just to see its actions on, so I could feel it on the gallbladder and the liver. Um, but this could be really nice with like lemon rosemary hydrosol drink, right? Lemon water with rosemary hydrosol could be really pretty. So hands down, um, I do have the cineol type with me, but I just, as, as an aromatherapist, as you know, those of you with me, I know you're aromatherapy folks, you kind of pick who you like to work with and stick with it. So I'm, I don't work with cineol a lot, I just have it for when I need it. When you think rosemary, it's often um, respiratory support. So I know Becky's with me, um, and I have my nausea oil. One thing you can consider doing this is sesame oil. Um, I forgot what I have in here. I have it in my recipe book with the blue tape that's really specific and lovely. For clients, I make pretty labels. For me, I make things with blue tape. You can um, do really low dilution, maybe 1%. And then, you know, nausea, nasal oil for sinus congestion, allergies. Um, and I'm not going to demonstrate doing dropping oil in my nose, but this could be very beneficial for sinusitis and um, just congestion and helping with and soothing because like sesame oil is super lovely and penetrating. So yes, I'm saying to put oils up your nose, but you did hear me say that's a one ounce bottle, 1% dilution, maybe a little bit higher. You're going to blend with really soothing like sesquiterpene alcohols, some monoterpenes, and then maybe you'll put like um, a nice conifer, like white fir. There's so many conifers. I have black spruce, green myrtle, and sorrow were the ones I was just kind of looking at my box of oils before coming to the garage and gross that just fell on the floor, but that's okay. You know, alcohol's our friend to wipe things off with. So respiratory support, ah, oh, sorrow, green myrtle. I have a thing with green myrtle. I have some plants, um, gorgeous, up by the front door. Ah, oh, it's so nice. I need to wipe those caps off, and I misplaced the verbin on. So again, um, oh, that's so calming and soothing. Um, would be really nice in that nasal blend, the oil up the nose or a steam inhalation, a vaporizer, rosemary, sorrow, and myrtle. Oh, so pretty. If you're thinking about the pick-me-up, um, if you need a pick-me-up, I know green myrtle didn't fall on the floor. Um, kind of a classic pick-me-up, black pepper with... Um, Rosemary, maybe a little lemon could be really nice for that cephalic oil. Rosemary is known to be like a bam, right? For focus, rosemary for remembrance, um, says, said, wrote Shakespeare. And that reminds me, there is another herbalist saying, where's my little piece of paper? Oh, well, I'll find it. A funny herbalist saying about this being like lusty and zesty. Uh, it is a bit of a sassy oil. Hi. So we're talking about a pick-me-up. If you want some kind of sassy zestiness in your life, um, uh, basil is sassy, lusty, really spicy. Maybe you pair that with some of the black pepper, rosemary, verbenon. 
that'll wake you up. That could be a nice, um, also mold, blending that into aches and pains blend because rosemary is really nice for regenerative aches and pains, stimulating blood flow. So you might want to pair that with like lemongrass, peppermint is another one. Um, lemon is really nice if you need to pick me up. Hmm, that's so lovely. Wow, my condenser is at 107. You can see we're in the sunlight here. It's kind of insane. So I could go on and on. I want to see what that herbalist wrote about the being zesty, zesty, zesty. You know, things fly away and move around. So we could talk more about smelling the oil, but I saw some of you are asking me questions. So if you do want to ask me a couple more things about the distillation process, I'm looking in the sun. We can do that. I'm going to show you the distillate right now. Hope you can see that. The sun is, is not cooperating with me. And it's fun. I wish you could hear this. I'm going to try. This still is singing right now. There's like a whistling going on. I don't know if you hear that. And I know, Becky, you're on with me. Um, I don't know if your you're still sings at all sometimes. Um, but it's quite... Lovely. And when you're distilling, because these are aromatics, we know um, you start to smell it even before the drip comes out. So that's really nice um, to be a part. In the garage, you kind of know. And when you hear this still start to sing, you know it'll start dripping soon. Oh, so see, this is what happens. My condenser is not happy. Um, a little bit about distillation. I'm using an incredibly small pump right now, if you can see that very small pump. Um, and when you're distilling, um, I decided to use this pump just because I use just a tiny bit of plant material. And what happens is um, there's the whole, pre the pressure of the water on the pump matters, how high your, your condenser is matters, and that all affects the flow of your condenser right here. So this just started to overflow, which is interesting. So this is obviously not an industrial setup and um, never leave your still because <laughs> you can run out of gas. I'm using a propane tank right now. Some people use a hot plate, um, but you never want. Um, I once had rose petals explode and the top. The top popped off because there was a, ba a backlog um, where the rose petals got stuck. So you really have to stay on top of things. I think even in an industrial setting, because you're working with heat and pressure, and that is like a re making a bomb, right? Which is which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> why not? So I'm gonna move my little oils here. So we talked about a bunch of things about rosemary. I think it's just interesting. Um, it's an oil, uh, I call them one of the gateway drugs of aromatherapy. I don't know if you feel the same way with me. Many people are comfortable with and know rosemary, eucalyptus, lavender, and the citruses. And they're ancient, beautiful plants that people just love and they're effective. And one thing, um, that's, they're just effective. Um, the only thing rosemary is known to be contraindicated for is it could be overstimulating. So someone with severe heart issues, you might even think, which is connected with the kidneys. Like you just, you don't want to give someone rosemary all the time if they have um, a hyper situation. This is great for like hypo issues if you need to speed up things. Let's see. Um, so I think I'm going to briefly leave my still and I'll show you the plants, but I did find my crumpled piece of paper. I think I'll be reposting this again on my website. Um, if you're with me or watching the video, I did just post up something about clay today for washing your hair. See, um, <laughs> uh, and, um, clay hydros, excuse me, rosemary hydrosol would be lovely as again, a hair rinse and, um, yeah, lovely as a hair rinse. But here's what on um, this thing I found by the herbalist or herbalist William Langham, a Brit, I believe. Um, he, in my words, conveyed its stimulating and convivial qualities. This being the herb, not just the essential oil. So um, seeth, that means boil. So boil much rosemary and bathe therein to make thee lusty, lively, joyful, liking, and youngly. 
So I found that to be quite amusing and very spunky and fun. And um, I, my words here about rosemary, the oil, the essential oil is warming and stimulating. It certainly is. It brings the blood. It is a known stimulant. That's why it's helpful for like the clarity um, in bringing blood. It's warming, stimulating, fortifying, and clearing. It is fresh, playful, and penetrating, yet dispersive, making it a brilliant oil for dispelling stagnation. Most oils are brilliant for dispelling stagnation, by the way. Um, so I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm going to go walk to the house and show you the plants, and then I'm going to say goodbye um, to show you the rosemary. So walk with me, talk with me with Rosemary. Um, let's hope this stills fine for five minutes or so. So today is a gorgeous day. Um, that's another thing. If you're picking herbs, um, you probably already know this. Uh, do it mid-morning to early morning, no, late morning, sunny day. You don't want um, a cloudy overcast day and you want the sun out because you don't want water on your plant material. And if it's an aromatic plant material especially, the oils are more likely to be produced by the plants under stress. And that gent stress meaning heat and sun. So that's something interesting. It smells so good. So here we are in my little front front stoop. So here, look at this sad rosemary plant with me. Um, here, and we see this. This is so ridiculous with this tripod. So this is kind of a sad plant, isn't it? It's pretty sad, but it's been with me for a few years and it's a fighter. Um, so I plan on transplanting it actually um, come maybe September. So it has time to adjust in its new home for the winter. Here's what's in the still right now. This is the prostrate one. I remember when I was in Sedona, Arizona, um, I saw one in, it was like October and it was in full bloom, absolutely gorgeous. And here's Myrtle, brand new. I'm hoping that she'll overwinter with me, um, which will be so amazing. So this is Rosemary with its friend, a very petite version of lavender, by the way. So I hope this was fun. I hope you're inspired to cook with Rosemary get yourself some hydrosol, go smell some rosemary. I can't get over the smokiness of this one. It's kind of to die for, actually. Uh, so thanks so much. Um, if you have any questions, you, uh, just email me or direct message me. I'm hanging around in my garage. So as I've been saying at the end of Plant Talk stuff, thanks for the impromptu with me. Um, so love yourself, love the plants. Have a beautiful day, and um, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Take care.